Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I am going to show you how you can test your new machine or new material. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, uh, the first thing you want to do when you get a new machine or for instance if you change your uh, laser module or if you are adventuring yourself with new materials is to basically uh, test a bunch of settings so that you know exactly what the result is. Normally you would basically um, perform as many tests as many uh, parameters or power settings you want to try. However, there is a clever way um, to basically test all of the power settings and access speed at increment on a single uh, project or on a single test, I should say. So I'm sure that um, you've been seeing this elsewhere, for instance, uh, in other videos on YouTube. And there are these cool arrays of shapes where you set the power and the speed at increment and you would basically be able to uh, perform your test. That could be, for example, an engraving test or a cutting test, or sometimes you want to see uh, the lettering, how it uh, engraves at different sizes and so on. Now, um, you can basically uh, do one yourself with a light barn and it's pretty uh, easy. However, I know that if you don't have light barn and uh, you are on a budget, you won't be able to do that. So the test that I'm going to show you today, I will basically extract it into uh, .g code, which is the type of uh, G code format recognized by laser GRBL, so that you can basically uh, test your machine. Now, unfortunately, the test that I'm about to show you won't work with your uh, Neget desktop application, and that's because uh, the Neget desktop application overrides the um, power settings, so you will not be able to basically uh, give a file with power setting in them. So, unfortunately, uh, you won't be able to do that. But if you are willing to download uh, laser GRBL, which is a free software, you will basically be able to do that. Now, let's jump right into Lightburn and let me show you exactly how you can prepare uh, your own test file. All right, here we are in Lightburn. Now, the first thing you want to do is to choose which shape you want to test. Now, I would go for a rectangle, but you are free to choose a circle or a polygon, whatever it uh, suits you. Now let's click on the rectangle and let's draw anywhere on the canvas and let's give it a size. So what I found working fine for this kind of test uh, is a 10 millimeter wide, uh, width and a 5 millimeter height. Okay. Now after once the shape is ready, as you can see over here, we can select it and to basically write across the page so we can use the array tool over here now the array uh, we, uh, wizard will pop up and here you will need to prompt how many columns, how many rows and some other parameters so uh, since we are going to try 10 power settings 10% for 100% and 10 um, speed settings we are going to give a 10 columns and 10 rows as you can see over here now, this remembers the settings that I've used in my previous uh, projects, uh, but if you might be wondering how you can give uh, this gutter here or padding or space, call it the way you like, you will basically set it over here. Now, you can either set the distance from the center to the center of each individual object, or you can basically put the padding from the hedge. As you can see, when I click on the radio button, the X spacing became a three millimeter. So it's accounting automatically for the change. Okay, in my case, I want to be 13 and minus eight on the Y direction. Let's give it okay and we are good to go. Now, next, we want to apply a different uh, layer to each row. So we will basically select 
only one row by drawing a bound, bounding box around it like this so we'll go for the blue and then the red the green and so on all the way to the end alright once you're done with that we can go over to the layer manager and we can change the settings now I've prepared this in advance so we won't waste any time in the video and uh, so what you want to do you want to set everything to fill since it's the engraving that you want to test in this instance but you could have also uh, set it to line if what you want is to test cutting so in my case I'll go for fill and then for each one you will want to uh, increment your settings now for all of them you will need to set up 100% power and I will explain in a while why we do that so 100% is going to be our maximum power and 5% is going to be our minimum power for all of them 1 through 10 then the other thing you want to set up uh, is the speed of the axis over here that as you can see I've been incrementing by 100 for the first five actually six and then 250 and 500 until the end uh, now a better way to work with layers if you're following my channel you know you just double click and you can then uh, come over here and then with the down arrow you will basically uh, go through all of your layers so once you're happy anyway with this we can close this up now the reason why I've um, told you to set each individual layer to 100% power output it's because we are going to apply now a power scale factor uh, to each individual columns of shapes and to do that we will need to select each columns so we will um, draw once again a bounding box uh, around it and we have to go to the shape properties over here now as you can see when nothing is selected there is nothing here when I select the column I will get uh, some of the parameters that I can change and the settings that you will see basically depends on the type of shape and also on the type of uh, engraving that you are going to do so as you can see we have a power scale so we can basically now set this to 10% then we can select the next we can go to 20% and so on all the way to the end now once you're done with that you can basically uh, click on preview here on the top and if you have the shade according to power enable you should see a nice shading going from light gray all the way to black on the last column uh, the cool thing of the preview in light barn is that, that you can also um, kind of animate how the uh, machine is going to engrave your project so you can use this slider over here for example or you can basically uh, set a playback speed and then you can click on play and you will see how uh, light barn is animating the drawing for you another thing that you can see in um, and the preview is the total estimated time for your test or project whatever happened to be All right so let's give it okay now let's give some uh, label so to do that let's use the text so let's say 10 now let's set the size of the text text to uh, 5 millimeter now let's use the select tool let's move this around we could position this manually but if we want we can vertically align it to the object below so to align you will basically click the object that you want to align and then the object that you want to align to by holding down the shift key and then in this case is a vertical alignment center and as you can see we were pretty much there now instead of duplicate and then modify the text we can basically use the same array and as you can see it remembers the previous settings with the center spacing and that's the reason why I wanted to use the center spacing rather than 
the padding between the edges so now we can basically go ahead and to modify the individual number over here similarly um, let's once again select select tool we can select one we can click ctrl d to duplicate and we can drag this across to create our speed label over here now in this case we want to select all of them and to align them uh, to the left so that we can have them nice and clean uh, what we can do also we can give a title to our labels so for example we have power and to also give a nice uh, unit of measure similarly we can do it with speed and the unit of measure oh, is going to be whichever units you want to use in my case it's a millimeter per minute okay and then we can basically position this approximately to the center we can use one of those alignment options but I won't show you that we can rotate this one by 90 degrees again to try and high bullet into the right place and that's basically how you go about it now we can once again look at the preview and you can see that that's how the preview looks like um, we could um, eventually give um, a different layer here to the labels so let's go to the layer this is the black layer I would suggest you to keep all the informations and writing in general as a G code type so as a line that's gonna take much less time to perform and the other thing that I would suggest you to do when you do the test is to basically put some information about your machine the laser and the material uh, and other useful information that you might then uh, need to remember afterward so once you are done you will basically end up with something like this let me show you what I prepared for my machine I have this test file over here I won't save this project and that's what we get so as you can see uh, this was uh, an engraving test so my machine NJ Master 2S Plus with the module the line interval uh, material and thickness now this is something uh, that I want to highlight and uh, so that you can avoid basically catching on fire now you should go and enable or disable accordingly layers or shapes if you know that at certain power settings you are basically uh, ending up either going through the material or basically catching on fire and that's my case over here with this low speed and higher power I will basically uh, either burn the material or end up on the opposite side so what I've decided here to do is to basically assign uh, different layers as a line that means that's going to perform some kind of cut or dip engrave but it's not going to fill it in like a regular engraving would do so that I will basically see the result in here now once you are done with that you will basically once again uh, preview the engraving you can see over here and the estimated time and you can send it to your machine with your uh, new material and you're basically good to go now as I said in the intro uh, you won't be able to perform such kind of test with the NeJet desktop application because the NeJet desktop application overrides the power so you're setting up the power with it so you won't be able to uh, set different power for different part of your project um, however um, you can uh, perform similar kind of test with laser GRBL so for this reason I have basically exported the G code of this uh, only this part over here so that you can basically uh, go ahead and test your machine so to do that you will basically click on save G code that will basically export uh, the project into some kind of G code format you can see over here you can see you can choose the .g code 
Uh, you can eventually use the dot and see, but as I said, the Neget desktop application won't recognize it anyway, so I didn't do that. So let me now show you um, over here, if I go on the test, you'll basically see, oops, that basically I have the G code over here. Now, a uh, cool thing that uh, Lightbarn is doing for you, it's uh, putting in comments. Let's see if I can catch one so that I can show you exactly how the file looks like and how it is structured. There we go. So here it says that is a scan mode at 500 millimeter per minute with 100% power. However, uh, as we set all the power scale settings, you can see over here that we have an S200, stands for 20%, 300 stands for 30%, 40% and so on. So that's basically what we uh, did with uh, uh, with Lightbarn. Now, if I launch uh, Laser GRBL, you will see that we will be able to. You can just drag and drop it inside. You will see that we have this uh, shading, so we are basically able to perform the test uh, with Laser GRBL as well. All right. Now, I will leave you with the machine engraving. In the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you liked it, click the thumb up button below. If you have any comment, leave them below. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now!